Hi, Ozzy here. This morning a fellow YouTuber, the Atheist Chef, sent me a private message asking me about a chestnut question within the Great Debate. Namely, can something come from nothing? And having obtained his permission to do so, I'd like to share his brief correspondence with me on this, since it's an issue that comes up again and again, and one often hears theists or apologists state with great assurance that something can't come from nothing, or from nothing, nothing comes. These maxims are often stated like they're established facts, or undeniable deductive truisms. Now, I want to make it clear that it's not my intention to establish that something has, in fact, come from nothing, that something ever did come from nothing. Nor am I uh, assuming or arguing that a condition of absolute nothingness ever did exist or obtain. What I'm talking about in this video is the logical possibility or conceivability of something coming from nothing. Is it logically possible that something could come from nothing? That's the question. So the atheist Schaff wrote the following to me. I, I quote, can something come from a literal nothing and is calling that a logical impossibility the proper terminology? Secondly, is there a way to even argue to prove that something is logically impossible outside of proving it is contradictory? End quote and to which I would respond as follows. To your first question, I don't think that something coming from nothing is logically impossible. I see no contradiction there. To the second question, no, there's no way to prove that something is logically impossible without showing that it is either self-contradictory or entails a contradiction. In other words, one must be able to present a reductio ad absurdum argument to show that something is logically impossible. And incidentally, that's also the form of argument, that is reductio ad absurdum argument, that one uses to show that something is logically necessary. To say that X is necessary is precisely to say that not X is logically impossible. They mean the same thing. That's what it means to say that X is logically necessary. That not X is logically impossible. Logical impossibilities and logical necessities can only be demonstrated by demonstrating contradictions. To show that a proposition describes something logically impossible, you just have to drive a contradiction from it. And to show that a proposition, proposition describes something logically necessary, one has to demonstrate that the negation of that proposition is logically impossible. And this is achieved by deriving a contradiction from the negation of that proposition. This is what's meant by proof by contradiction. It's what's known as reductio ad absurdum argument. It's how we prove things are logically necessary or logically impossible in math, in logic, in geometry, in set theory, or any formal domain. Now, the atheist chef followed up um, uh, that question uh, and my response by saying, ah, okay, I see, thanks. So I'd say something coming from nothing is not logically impossible, but then is it just best to say it's physically impossible? End quote. And to which I would respond as follows. It might be physically impossible for something to come from nothing. We don't know. But it's rather hard to imagine why or how it could be physically impossible. If a condition of absolute nothingness had been the case at some point, if there were nothing in existence at all, literally nothing, the complete absence of everything, there'd be nothing, literally nothing, to physically prevent something from springing into existence out of nothingness. There'd be nothing to cause it either, but nothing to prevent it. No reason why it could not happen. That is, there would be no causes, no forces, no principles, no laws of nature that would be violated because there'd be no anything at all. One of the reasons for thinking that it's possible, logically possible, a bare possibility, perfectly conceivable that something could come from nothing, is precisely that there'd be nothing, literally nothing to prevent that. There's no contradiction involved and no physical principle would be violated if that did happen. 
because there be no such principle to violate. What reason is there to think that something can't come from nothing? Other than the empirically based induction that we don't see this happen in a universe where something does exist. So that was my answer to that question. And then he came back with the, the following. Quote, What's interesting to me is that it seems so counterintuitive, and I hear so many creationists almost trying to be insulting towards the idea of something coming from a literal nothing. But the way you describe it isn't really, it isn't really that far-fetched, but I still can't wrap my head around how a literal nothing can do anything. End quote. Well, good point, to which I say the following. Yes, it is admittedly very counterintuitive. It runs contrary to my intuitions, too. But so what? So much the worse for our intuitions here if we have no good reasons to support them. Remember, our intuitions that something can't come from nothing is not born of any experience with that. It's not like we've had experience to draw on about what happens when the state or condition of absolute nothingness holds true or obtains. We don't live in that reality. Our intuitions about what does happen, or is likely to happen, or can happen, are all born of, or are informed by, living in a world where something does exist. Plenty of things exist. All kinds of laws of nature and rules and regularities and principles are operative. And in that world, we find things don't just pop into existence. That's true. Now, I know some might object uh, that there are weird quantum phenomena involving virtual particles which briefly pop into existence out of the quantum vacuum. Uh, but it's debatable if that quantum vacuum is in any sense nothingness. In any case, it's not the absolute absence of everything. <laughs> but such phenomena are not well enough understood by me to appeal to as evidence one way or the other. So I'm just going to disregard that for the purposes of this discussion. My point, though, here is we have plenty of inductive, empirical evidence that in a circumstance, in a reality, where something does exist, namely ours, in a universe where stuff does exist, things don't just spring into existence without a cause or reason. There's good empirical inductive evidence for that. But to apply that inductive conclusion to a circumstance where nothingness obtains, that's an incorrect and illegitimate application of induction. Who knows what can happen, if anything, in a reality wherein absolutely nothing existed? It'd be like being born in, or growing up in Finland, for instance, and noting how everyone around us speaks Finnish, and concluding, just on that basis, that outside of Finland, everyone who speaks must speak Finnish. If the only country you'd ever been in was Finland, and all of your experiences about people speaking reveal that people speak Finnish, you'd surely have intuitions about what to expect, about what people speak, what language they speak, whenever they speak. But you'd be mistaken if you tried to extend that inductive conclusion outside of Finland. That would be a bad induction. The application of inductive evidence from one domain into a domain where we have no reason to think that these inductive experiences would still be predictive. As for trying to understand how something comes from nothing, that too is a misapplied induction. You're looking for a cause, you're looking for a mechanism for how this could happen, by which something is brought into existence out of nothingness. But that's to lose sight of what we're talking about. If a condition of absolute nothingness obtained, there'd be no such cause or mechanism possible. There'd be no cause or mechanisms of any kind. If something did come from nothing, it would be doing so for literally no reason, by no cause. It would be the spontaneous, a-causal springing into existence of something for no reason. There would be nothingness followed by something. Period. That, apparently, doesn't happen in a world where something exists. But in a reality where nothing at all existed, all bets are off. Who knows what's possible or impossible in a reality wherein absolutely nothing exists whatsoever. Our intuitions 
are not reliable guides here. None of our inductions, none of our experiences drawn from this world of something is applicable there in the world, the reality where absolute nothingness obtains. So, can something come from nothing? Well, who knows? But it's not a logical truism that something can't come from nothing. It's not a deductive truth. One is not uttering a contradiction, and no contradiction is entailed by the proposition something came from nothing. Those who think there is a contradiction there need to produce the reductio ad absurdum proof that it's logically impossible for something to come from nothing. And if one wants to argue that something can't come from nothing on the basis of induction, based upon our experience of the world and how things don't just spring into existence uncaused in our world, one will have to explain on what basis one thinks we can make valid inferences and predictions about what could or could not happen in a condition of absolute nothingness, which none of us have experienced, based exclusively upon experiences drawn from a reality where things do exist. Okay, that's all for now. I hope this helps. Thank you, Atheist Chef, for your questions, and thank you all for watching.